Hey there, Canonites. Welcome back to Halo Canon pre E3 QA. Uh, if all goes according to plan, you'll be seeing this right before E3 on June 8th, Sunday. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to say thank you to everyone for who submitted questions and apologize in advance if either I forget, I missed, you know, forgot to collect your question if I missed it during through one of the various comments or messages and if I give an inadequate answer as usual so without my, without further ado let's get right into it so media bias from Halo Archive asks in your opinion does blue team make an appearance anytime soon come on have you but no I'm kidding but no um I do think they're gonna make an appearance it we are from RTX 2012 we know that or at least according to Frank O'Connor, they do want to bring Blue Team and the Expanded Universe into the games. They did, you know, and he did respond specifically to uh, a question about Blue Team. So if I'm smart, I will include a clip now. Now. Play, play the clip. Play the clip! So in the book, uh, Ghost of Onyx, spoiler alert, but at the end... Uh, Halsey and I believe it's Blue Team is left in the in a micro Dyson sphere, and I was wondering if that the Spartans there, the Spartan threes and twos, would be included in Halo Four or the trilogy. Um, they will not be in Halo Four, uh, but we have plans for everyone that you just mentioned. Uh, characters that were sort of sealed off from the rest of the universe that people love are actually reconnected with the universe in meaningful ways. So we'll be doing that, but it's a, gonna be a long-term process. So you will get to find out what happened to those guys and it will actually be germane to the, the core game story eventually. Okay, well, so based on that, I can all, I mean, and we even see that, uh, that bit of concept art from, uh, from, I don't, um, from the Halo 4 <laughs> art book. <laughs> anyway. Um, based on you know, based on those two bits, I, I think we're I think we're definitely poised to see blue team in the near future. Um, I've said I've said in one of my pre I think it was even it might have been in my um, E three predictions video that I would love if you know blue team came in Halo five or some future game and they became the second third and fourth playable characters you know kind of like what they did with Arbiter and then the two Sankhali and Halo three Sankhali. Sungaily. Anyway, I hope that. Uh, so yeah, I definitely think they're going to show up, and I would love if they actually became playable characters in the campaign, or even if they had uh, their own story and or game. Oh, maybe that's what we'll get this year at E3. Maybe we'll see a blue team spinoff game that that fills the gap between Halo, you know, up to Halo Four with what they're doing, or even after Halo Four. Wild speculation, actually. There's nothing to support that. Anyway. I'm going to butcher this name, so I, I, another apology in advance if I butcher anyone's names. Um, Dajir, again, I'm sorry if that's not right, Dajir1 asks, Do you think we will see or hear from Lydis again anytime soon? I certainly hope so. It would be so terrible if they just created this character just for, you know, you know just for Halo Escalation and then just did nothing with him. I wouldn't be too surprised if that happened. Um, I mean, that's more or less what happened to to Spartan Davis in, in some respects uh, from Spartan Assault. But I would, I would love if we saw Lydis sometime soon. I mean, you know, within the Halo universe, we're coming, we're, we're almost halfway through the year of 2558. 2559, the setting of the return from Halo Evolutions is coming up. So if, you know, and, uh, you know, that's where the Sangili and uh, the Gerald Hanai really start going all out war on each other so um, according to that according to the story of the return so let's I, I can hope that I would hope that he returns uh, digital commander asks what is your favorite piece or set of halo art oh that is a tough one that is a tough one that, no okay um I mean, God, there's so many, there's so many good ones. It's really, I mean, I got all the, I got all the art books up there. It, I don't know if I could ever pinpoint a single piece of art that I love above all others. Um, damn, I really should have thought about this beforehand. <laughs> 
and there, there's there's a lot of beautiful pieces, even just from like from a professional standpoint, from or um, from you know three four three slash Bungie when they were in control from the you know the professional pieces of art. There's some beautiful fan art out there. I don't know that I could pick a single one above all others. It's I, I'm really sorry that I don't have an answer for you there. It's just yeah. I usually don't like to deal in favorites, especially when it comes to art. Dark Skull 1337 or Elite. I still have no idea which one you prefer, Dark Skull. Asks, what do you think of the possibility of the Isodidact and Chantagreen making an appearance in the games? Could this link Chaka slash Guilty Spark commandeering the, uh, the Oni research vessel to look for the librarian? Um, I personally don't think that either of them are alive at this point. Maybe Chantagree, since she was a life worker and inherited the title of Life Shaper, and we know that uh, compared to other Forerunners, Life Shapers, or I'm sorry, Life Workers live much, much longer than the other rates. So maybe she could be alive. I mean, technically they could they could all be alive if they put themselves into some sort of stasis. Um, you know, like the, uh, the, the slip space stasis tubes that we see in Ghosts of Onyx, um, or even if they had some technology similar to the ISO dot, to the, or, sorry, the Urdidex, uh, combat cryptum, they could very well be alive. There, there's plenty of ways for that to happen, but based on their, based on the ISO Didax dialogue in, um, at the end of, it, or in the rebirth epilogue to Halo Salentium, uh, I would imagine that he did not. He does not expect to be around when humanity comes to reclaim the mantle. So, I mean, and, you know, it, it's hard to say what kind of time frame he ever he had ever imagined. But you know, he certainly didn't expect himself to be around because he tells Riser when they're leaving. You know, uh, maybe one day your kids will find the you know your ancestors will or sorry your descendants not your ancestors will go back in time. Time travel. You heard it here first. Um, but no. Uh, you know, he says that he'd expect he would he would expect that Riser's descendants and his descendants might meet up on the Ark sometime in the future. Of course, that also seems to imply that the Ice of Didact expected to be staying on the Ark or something. I don't know. Who knows? So, it's possible. I don't think I would think it would be. I don't know. I think it could be slightly more interesting if they just had if they had new characters. But I would not be. I mean, there's plenty. Of, again, there's plenty of ways for them to have survived the hundred thousand years. So I wouldn't be one hundred percent against it. Um, and as for is the, if this could link to the to Chaka's uh, stealing the UNSC Rubicon, as which is the name of the ship that he takes over in uh, Primordium. Um, absolutely, I think that's going to play into um, Halo Five Guardians. I was actually surprised that didn't play into Halo Four. But it should definitely play into Halo Five Guardians based on some of the uh, concept art that we've seen, or based on the few pieces of concept art we've seen, um, and if the idea that we're going to the Ark in that at all is has it is true in any regard, um, I definitely think that'll play in. I mean, it would seem so weird for them to to have all this hitting it, you know, in Primordium and then just not do anything with it. So, um, yeah. I think there's def I think that's definitely a, a possibility. Never tech, not never tech like I said last time. Sorry, buddy, about that <laughs> uh, from the last Q and A. But never tech, never tech. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, asks, what do you think about Destiny? Are you interested at all? If this isn't a valid question, oh, <laughs> I'll stop there. Um, what do you think about Destiny? Yes, that, and yes, that is a valid question. Anything and everything. It's pre E three, not exclusively Halo. Um, even though this channel is Halo, but no, um, I am I am absolutely excited for Destiny, even in spite of some of the you know Marty going, Joseph, uh, Joseph Staten going very recently. Um, I'm still excited for it. Um, I'm gonna get you know whatever collector's edition or whatever comes out with that, if I can afford it. You know, naturally Halo is gonna take uh, a little priority, but. We, uh, but um, I definitely want to get Destiny. It looks really good. I'm still a huge Bungie fan, even you know, even after they, even now that they moved on. I love all their games. I haven't played all of them, granted, but I played the marathon games. I've played uh, 
Uh, I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time since I've played some of them, but you know, I, I do remember the marathon games above all else. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to Destiny. I think it's going to be really interesting. It could easily be a flop, but you know, I don't. Um, I think Bungie's going to. I think Bungie's going to pull it off. You know, either that or they'll go walk the walk the path of Assassin's Creed and kind of not get it 100% right with that the first one, and then. The second installment will be absolutely perfect, like it was with Assassin's Creed 2. Anyway, um, second uh, second question: What is your opinion about the drastic design change uh, design changes in the cov uh, of the Covenant in Halo 4? Not only in the armor, but also the species look, grunts and jackals, especially. Um, initially, I was very much against it. I was still kind of pissed with the way the grunts look. Um, I was a big fan of the way they looked in Halo f in. Um, in Halo 3 and in Halo uh, Halo Reach, I thought those were like the best grunt designs ever. I love that that those were the models that they used for Halo uh, Combat Evolved Anniversary. So I was yeah I was not the I think I, I said it in my Halo 4 review and maybe I can include a clip I should include a clip here. Um, they look like mini Krogan. For that matter, all the Covenant species kind of look weird. The grunts look like mini Krogan. <laughs> so, and now they do say that there's a it's a different subspecies of grunt. Um, they, or they did. Um, I think it was BS Angel said that in one of the um, the pre Halo Four Halo bulletins. Uh, but you know, I'm not. I don't. You know, but um, I kind of wish they'd included it in the in the Halo Four guide because otherwise it's like, uh, you know. What you know? What's going on with that new look? Um, as for the jackals, I initially, I mean, I didn't have as much of a problem because you know, there's all the, the jackals. There's all these different subspecies. I kind of like that diversity. Um, so it it never it didn't bother me too much, and I kind of like I kind of liked how vicious they looked uh, a little bit. So it wasn't it was that that change wasn't uh, too drastic for me. Um, as for the armor, I would, um, it took me a little bit to warm up to it, but I, I never felt off-put by it. I mean, I absolutely love the Zealot look, the new Zealots. They look just beastly. Um, I'm not a big, though, as I'm sure some of you might have heard this, I've probably heard this before, I am not a big fan that the Covenant stopped, inve stopped investing in sleeves. And, uh, Q Halo 4, you know, Q Halo 4 image to make my point if I don't have it up already. I probably do. Gotta think about that. But yeah, um, you know, you, and you just have like these floating gauntlets. I mean, arguably some of that, at, some of those that were in in earlier Halo games a little bit, but in it was it was especially prominent in, in Halo 4 for some reason, but you know, they, they just have these floating Guards, you know, right on their, right on their, on the top of their hand there. So, uh, I kind of took, I took a little issue with that. But overall, the design doesn't bother me that much. I like, you know, they're all from. I like the explanation. They're all from Hesturos, so they have this unique design, um, and it's kind, it's kind of implied that it's older Covenant tech. I mean, especially because you, you have like, you have the older variant of the Phantoms and the beam rifles in there, which is why the beam rifle looks so different. So. Um, that, that kind of, so it, it's not a hunt, it's not a huge issue, it's more, most of the grunts are what bother me, I guess. <laughs> kind of funny that, pick on the little guys, right? Um, okay, next one. Awesome Sauce asks, I think, I think the real question is, I'm gonna hold you to that, if this isn't the real question. Yeah. Uh, what's the story, what is the story for another day? Oh, Yes. From when I announced this, and probably has, and kind of has to do with my hair right now, um, I was go I went to an anime convention in uh, in the area I live in, uh, Rosemont, Illinois. I don't live in Rosemont, but that's where the convention was. Um, and I want and I was uh, dressing up as a character, and I figured it would be a lot more fun to, you know, because the character has white hair. Obviously, it's not white right now and that's because my for one thing my roots have grown back in and 
Um, I haven't taken as good a care of the care of my my hair after um, you know because when you bleach it you and blonde it and white it you have to do a lot to take care of it. So I haven't really kept up with that, but it's mostly because my roots are showing through, so my hair is not as white as it used to be. But, you know, so at the time I made the video, I was still blonding it up to, so I could get the toner to get it up to a much lighter color, um, more lack of color. But so, yeah, so that's the, that's the story. And, um, I just thought it would be more fun to, to make my hair the color than, uh, than buy a wig. Anyway, um, but really, what do you think will, uh, but really, do you think we should get more side stories like we did for Sadie? I like that we got more than just Forerunners. Oh, I absolutely love Sadie's story. The more stuff like that that they can do, the better. Um, I mean, Sadie's story was probably, I, already, I think that was probably, like, that's one of the reasons I loved ODST. ODST is my favorite Halo game, if I haven't said that before, or made that clear. Um... It's because we got to we got this look at what so you know what was going on you know just, you know just prior to the Covenant invasion and what was going on in the city of of New Mombasa during that, um, and, you know just stuff like that. It, it it just adds this real depth to the Halo universe. It adds it grounds it. I think is the term I'm looking for. Um, much more than because you know when you just have super soldiers and ancient aliens, it's like okay, that's a lot of fun, but I'm not going to invest in it as much as as if I had something a little more relatable. You know, not you know not that I didn't love Halo beforehand, obviously, but um, when you have something that's more relatable, such as you know just average people, you know, in the middle of that alien invasion, that's much more relatable. That draws, that's gonna that's gonna tend to draw people in a lot more. So I, I would love if we got more of that. Stelius Mon asks, what do you think is going to happen to Parissa from Halo Evolutions? Um, for those who don't know, Parissa was the lieutenant of the squad from the Halo Evolutions story, uh, Palace Hotel, which is based on the level Metropolis. I don't think we're really going to see her ever again. I think she was just a one-time occurrence to kind of start fleshing out the Chief a little more as a human character. It's one of those really early steps to do that. So I don't think we're really going to see her again. I would love to. It would be interesting to see what how her reaction is to see her childhood friend turned into a Spartan. But we'll see. Uh, when do you think we will get more Halo books? We, w we're, we are supposed to get them this fall. Um, I think I still have the image on my hard drive, so cue image from the Gallery Books release. Um... But no, uh, when uh, 343 announced its uh, deal with Gallery Books a little while back, they did say that we were supposed to get another book uh, this fall. So that'll probably be a lead-in to whatever Halo game comes out this year. Because um, we are supposed to get one. Whatever that may be. Depending on what it is. But yeah, so we, are, we'll, we'll, we will get another book. As for... And uh, what do you want the new books to explore in terms of lore? I would love to see what Blue Team is up to. <laughs> it's not the certain... Yeah, keep circling back to them. Uh, I would love to. I would love a more in-depth look at the start of the Spartan Four program, and maybe a comprehensive look at what. Because we got a we got a brief look at some of their augmentations, but I'd love to know exact you know a much more comprehensive look at those. I would love to know how they stack up to the Spartan Twos. That'd be interesting. Um, I'd love to see what Halsey was up to in the years between. Um, you know, the Kilo 5 trilogy and uh, Spartan Ops. Hmm. There's a lot There's a lot of potential for um, stories, so... But, I mean, those are probably the two that come to mind, above all others. Uh, if I were to guess, though, we're probably going to get something that takes place after Halo 4. Who knows? Or, hell, we have that digital feature with Ridley Scott. Maybe we'll get some backstory on Marlo. If, uh... <laughs> You know, if he is going to be a prominent character. So maybe that's what our book will be about. Uh, what are your wants in the Halo TV show? And do you think the move on to Showtime was a good idea? I'll, set, I'll do the second half first. The Showtime, I think, is a great idea. That's a great way to get uh, Halo out there to more people. Because uh, I think there's pro you probably have more people that subscribe to, uh, like, the movie channels with their cable. Then, well, I don't know. It's 
it's hard to say, but I, I think it's a good idea. You have the potential to reach a lot more people uh, with Showtime. Um, so, I overall, I, and of course, uh, being on a paid cable like that can just can only increase your production value and your overall budget. So, I hope that works out. I think that's a good idea, and I hope it works out. Um, as for what are my wants, I did kind of go over this in the previous video, but to keep it short, um, uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, I think I said, I, I, I would love to see, again, Blue Team. <laughs> I really want to know what Blue Team's up to. I'm sorry. Um, you do something like a Spartan Ops Season 2 of sorts or uh, see what it's, you know, just something like maybe do some more stuff with Majestic, follow them around, um, or even a new Spartan team. I mean, that would probably be the most interesting just because you could have a new all-new Spartan, uh, Spartan 4 team. Uh, maybe start when they were on Requiem and then go from there and then, you know, go out from there. Uh, let's see. Uh, we could have a show centered around Oni, like almost Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. style kind of show. That would be interesting, but I don't think that would sell too well, except for the really hardcore fans. But those are, those are some ideas that come to mind. Uh, Keelan Bruning asks, I, I hope I pronounced your name correct, correctly, uh, do, what, uh, how would you feel if Bungie's new game Destiny was in the same universe as Halo, but set in the far future? If the Traveler were a precursor, I think it's a really cool way to continue with Halo's canon and universe, but at the same time keep it, uh, new and fresh. Um, I, I wouldn't really be too excited about that just because, uh, the, the aesthetic and the feeling of the two universes are so vastly different. Um... And I don't know, I just think that I think that keeping them separate allows for both universes to expand much more than if they were directly connected. But it's you know it's hard it's hard to say exactly how that might work or how I actually feel about that. So sorry, I don't have a very good answer for you on that in that on that in that regard. Sorry. Um, Sean Seeley asks, "What if another studio was making a new Halo game with supervision from 343, and that and that's the gamer again this year, and could possibly be an E3? I would not be surprised. I would absolutely love that. I mean, Saber, you know, and that's what usually what unless it's a main installment game, that's what 343 does. You know, be it uh, Saber Interactive with CEA. Um, I think it was Vanguard Games was the name of the studio that made Spartan Assault. Um, hell, even uh, you know, or you know." Um, Certain Affinity is the group that's been, is uh, the is are the developers that have made pretty much all the Halo maps since the Halo Anniversary map pack. You know they made all those. They made almost all the all the maps uh, for Halo Four. I'm not 100 percent sure on how many if it is if it was if they did make all of them or three four three made a few of them and but they definitely made the vast majority of the maps for Halo Four. So. Um, I would love, you know, I think that's a distinct possibility. That's really like, especially if Halo Two Anniversary is what's going on, going on. That's obviously probably going to be what we're, what the deal is. But if we're getting a Halo game this year, that's most. I think that's most likely what, um, what the what the deal will be. That some other studio is actually developing it with a, with oversight from Three Four Three. So, Breaking Away asks. Just to uh, just have to suggest this: the man that interrogates Halsey in Halo Four. What if he is the new Spartan? You want to replace him? Uh, could we have met this Spartan already? What if he? Uh, what if this means he really wants to replace the Chief in his entirety? Any thoughts? Um, I don't. Know, I mean, it's certainly a possibility. We have no. We. I mean, we have virtually no knowledge. Uh, Halsey said, "You know, the people before you were." Actually, I'll just roll the clip. Do you believe the Master Chief succeeded because he was, at his core, broken? What does John have to do with this? You want to replace him? The Master Chief is dead. But yeah, you know, she says that, you know, you're something else. Um... It could be that it's like I, li you know, he's saying I literally want to replace him, but 
that would definitely be an interesting twist if he actually was the Spartan that we see on the cover of uh, or on the Halo Five Guardians concept piece. So that's actually a pretty good idea, or a pretty interesting idea, I should say. Anyway, Sith Venator at um, Sith Venator. I gotta ask you sometime how to pronounce how you pronounce that, <laughs> or I should just look it up. What is your opinion on the time frame of when Clayton took the Hawks, Vultures, and Long Swords from the Spirit of Fire? It kind of bothered me this wasn't brought up at all in issue six, but it, but I would have, but I, but I wound up with, or but I, but I wound up with the thought that Clayton must have taken the aircraft carrier after the crew was already had already abandoned the Spirit of Fire, which begs the question: Does the new Colonial Alliance now have flood infection forms, or just more? or more just ready to be put in use. Um, I think it's I think what probably happened is Clayton just you um, like messed with some of the uh, you know um, just found these older model vehicles and messed with the registration so it made it look like they were from the Spirit of Fire. I don't think he actually found it. Uh, so I don't who knows. I mean Yeah, it, it's really hard to say. Um, it's possible the new Colonial Alliance might have found it. I mean, if you look where Spirit of Fire is, like the system that it's actually in at the end of Halo Wars, and then look where it is when you see it at the end of Halo Escalation, it looks like a very different si um, star system. And, you know, twenty just 27 years with eight, without a faster than light drive, they really shouldn't have made they really wouldn't have made it that far i mean voyager was launched the voyager space vessel was launched i want to say 30 years ago 40 years ago don't quote me on that obviously and you know it's it's not it hasn't even made it to the edge of our solar system at this point now granted that's a significantly uh less powerful drive than the spirit of fire would have but I mean, I think our, I think our, I think it is that our closest, uh, the closest star to us is, you know, Alpha Centauri, is like forty light years away, something like. No, no, it's not forty. Um, four light years away, so. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that the Spirit of Fire would have really been able to move very far without some sort of system. So who knows? We'll, we'll see. But ultimately, I think that. I do, I do agree. It sucks that it wasn't addressed directly, um, and I do. Uh, but honestly, I think that Clayton probably just found them, and uh, you know, or found these old these old model um, vehicles and just changed the registration so it would uh, fit, so it would lead back to the Spirit of Fire. Because obviously, I mean, he obviously changed something to get the spark, you know, to get the Infinity to where that glassing station was, so he might have just faked everything and have no idea where Spirit of Fire is. Michael Thanos, nice last name there, asks, I'm, ho I'm hoping for some kind of per uh, I'm hoping some of the personnel aboard Spirit of Fire took advantage uh, of the cryotubes despite the convenience or the flood. It's been 30 years, I have a really bad feeling about that ship. I'm not sure if any flood managed to get on board within the time frame of Halo Wars, or perhaps after, if they entered into any planets for some plausible reason. Escape from the ship, maybe. I guess you mean landing on planets or something, I don't know. Um, maybe Serena's rampant because of, the because of the assistance of the flood, or... Sorry. Or something else. I'm sorry, I couldn't read it after that. It just says W-O. I probably should have asked you about that. Um, well... Answering this first part of it, um, or looking at this first part, uh, you know, I, I would definitely think that's not. Well, at the end of Halo Wars, um, there's a Halo Wars timeline, and I'll try and get some footage and put it in here while I'm talking about it. That basically says uh, that says the that you know after the Sphere of Fire started drifting, um, one of the medical officers, they there was like flood. There had been flood infected bodies that had made it back on board to the ship, and they had to, you know, they, they put in, the medical officer put in all these uh, precautions to try and uh, reduce any sort of risk of infection by this parasite. So, it's, you know, the idea that the flood could have gotten aboard is very, very probable. All it takes, as, uh, as the shipmaster says in, in Halo 3, You barely survived a small contamination. And you, shipmaster, just glassed half a
continent. Maybe the flood is all I should be worried about. One single flood spore can destroy a species. Um, so yeah, if there, the flood most likely is there. Um, I, I do think some, like at the end of the panel, you only see half the cryopods really open, so it's very possible that some people are still in cryo on that ship. Um, and, um, you know, I'm sure there's, there's got to be some survivors. I, either that or, you know, hey, you know, 343 has to make a Halo Wars 2 to explain if, you know, why the ship might be lo actually lost with all hand lost with all hands in this case. You know, they got to conclude that story somehow properly, either by bringing them into the post-Covenant, human Covenant War era, or you know, resolving that story with a second Halo Wars game. Alright, uh, anyway, I wonder if they'll show anything more about Oni. I have a, I feel as if something is crooked up, uh, something crooked is up. Uh, has Master Chief found out that Oni do targeted Dr. Halsey for, sh uh, for his short period uh, during, during his, uh, during his, or, did Master Chief find out that Oni targeted Do uh, Halsey during his period of absence? I'm guessing he mean um, he won't, and he won't be happy about that. Um, it'd be interesting to see how the Chief might react. I mean, he does have a he does look at Halsey as a mother, but he's also conditioned to follow orders. So you know, follow orders to the letter. Um, but obviously, we saw that that he doesn't always do that in Halo Four. So it, it'd be interesting to see how he might react. To Oni targeting uh, targeting Doctor Halsey, he I think he'd, he'd probably be less than less than excited. But I mean, based on you, you know, you even see in Halo Glasslands, the Spartan two the Spartan twos of blue team just allow Halsey to be arrested. Um, I think they kind of they were hesitant to do so, but you know, ultimately they did because that's you know they got to follow orders, so. Um, Trevor, oh, God damn it, Trevor Zunit, Zunit, I, I know I butchered that name, I'm so sorry, uh, asks, I was sad when they put the Spirit of Fire at the end again, do you think that, or, uh, let me read it how he typed it, I was so sad when they put the Spirit of Fire at the end again! <laughs> No, um, but do you think that they will be making any more Halo books? See earlier in the video. Um, I don't want them to end on a note so bad with Mortal Dictata. Ew. <laughs> yeah, no, they're definitely making more Halo books. Um, and yeah, Mortal Dictata, it had a lot of good ideas, but it just didn't execute on them very well. <clears throat> hmm, excuse me. So, hopefully the next Halo books... Uh, so hopefully the next Halo books will be significantly better. We'll have new authors, so I'll, I'll be excited to see who they might get. Maybe Eric Nyland will finally return. <laughs> Here's hoping. And do you think they will make Halsey an antagonist in Halo 5 Guardians? An antagonist, yes. A bad guy, no. Um, Halsey has always been known for, you know, playing, t playing for her own ends. She's very, very, very smart. Probably the smartest human in, you know, in Halo. Um, arguably, whoever lived within that universe, like, in terms of humans. Um, so, you know, what she right now she's just playing Jewel to stay alive, maybe to get some actual revenge on Oni, maybe Sarah Palmer in Infinity. But she's not. She doesn't want. You know, Jewel wants to wipe out humanity once and for all. Halsey is not going to want to do that. I guarantee. So. She may be an antagonist of sorts, but she will not be a bad guy, per se, if that makes sense. Um, I less than three good music? <laughs> Asks, Hello Halo Canon, and thanks for another great video about Halo Escalation. I've been thinking about this recently. So Halo Wars is set around the year 2531, and in Halo Escalation, we now see a picture of the Spirit of Fire in 2558. I assume that is correct. It's about um, it's about twenty seven years later. Now I'm uh, now I'm not set, I'm not really sure about this part. But at the end of Halo Wars, we hear Serena say, "Captain, wake up! Something has happened." Considering that AIs go rampant after seven years, and Serena was put into service, I'm not sure one or two years at the one or two years at the end of Halo Wars. 
Then she spent five years left before going. Then she she has five years left before going rampant. Assuming that she warned the captain before going rampant, then the crew must have probably abandoned the ship somewhere around her before twenty five thirty six to twenty five thirty seven, which would be over twenty years ago. So the ship would be drifting with with flood and without crew for twenty years in space. So when the UNSC uh, finds the Spirit of Fire, they may not necessarily find the crew uh, or find the crew back. Find the crew, considering what I mentioned before. What do you think about this Halo cannon or someone else? Uh, yeah, what do you think? What do I think about this? Um, yeah, mostly. I, it's hard to say because we really don't know what Serena might have said when something has happened. But yeah, if they had a if they had abandoned ship, it probably was quite some time ago. Either that or like, and that that just assumes that that statement is going to remain as part of the canon. It's you know three four three could just write it off. Um, all together, which would, you know, I'm not saying this is the best route to go, but it would certainly be the easier route um, in terms of stories, but, yeah. And then there's people that think that uh, Serena could have shut herself down uh, to avoid rampancy. I don't know if that's possible for an AI like Serena. I mean, we saw something similar with uh, with Loki and... God, I can't remember the other AI's name at the moment. Uh, from Contact Harvest. He had an alternate persona... Um, and then he, you know, he, sw he would switch between these two AI, it, it was this, it was technically like this, these two AI that kind of lit, that sort of lived together. One would shut down for a number of years while the other took over and then they'd switch off and they'd be able to avoid rampancy like that. And, yeah, so I don't know if that would just, you know, just shutting down like that would work for a regular AI, so who knows. Um, Yeah. Dylan Carter asks, what non-Halo games are you looking forward to he hearing slash seeing more about in E3 this year? Destiny for one. Um, I'd like to see what new franchises Microsoft might be doing. Uh, if we might see a sequel to Rise that might be significantly better than Rise was. I doubt that we'll see it this soon, but who knows. Um, I really, really want to see uh, Mirror's Edge. I doubt that's going to happen because, I mean, it took them long enough just to tease at Mirror's Edge 2, but I really want to see that happen. Um, let's see. Hmm. Um, there's rumors of a new Mass Effect game, so I'm not... I'm, I'm not... <sighs> I don't know, you know, as for many, Mass Effect 3 was a big letdown, more than more so than just the ending. I, the ending initially didn't bother me as much as some of the other elements, notably the gameplay. Um, but you know that might I'm I would be interested I'd be willing to give it a chance depending on how that looked. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, I'd love to see another Portal game from Valve. Any, hell, anything from Valve, actually. I would love to see what, they, what they're working on. Um, I think that's, like, those are the ones off the top of my head at the moment, so, yeah. Um, I don't think you know, I wouldn't mind seeing another Gears of War game, but I don't think we'll see that this suit that uh, see it very soon. Um, yeah. What are you doing? Stop! Asked. What do you uh, What do you think about the Halo TV series? Um, see earlier in the video, or you can see my predict my I think it was my E3 predictions video, but yeah, there's. Um, um, Al Slaber asks, "Do you think that the crew of the Spirit of Fire are still alive, some uh, somewhere?" And well, let's stop there. Um, do I think that they're alive? Um, I I want to believe that they're alive. Um, that some of them have survived. Most notably, Red Team, the Spartans, just because I would love to see it. You know, the more Spartan twos, the better. Um, and George from Noble Team is. Or, and do you think George from Noble Team is alive because he is a Spartan too and Master Chief of the Earth Didact have been known to live slip space uh, rupture live through sli uh, slip space ruptures and sorry for my don't worry about your writing 
uh, I was able to I was able to understand what he said, so don't worry. Um, George, no, I don't think he's he's alive because here here's how subspace works. You know, it opens a rupture into into subspace from normal space. Once you're in there, it doesn't like it's not like a it's not a wormhole that just instantly teleports you to another section of space. It's a wormhole that brings you into this other dimension. And then you move through, and then ships move through that with their normal drives. You know, UNSC has got their fusion drives. Covenant's got Covenant and Forerunners have their impulse drives. So, um, and you know, if you have a better slip space drive, it'll allow you to move more efficiently through slip space. But you know, you have to have some sort of momentum. So, really, if George were did somehow survive, because I mean. You know the the radiation given off by an unshielded, uh, by an unshielded slip space drive would probably kill him. Uh, if he is still alive, he would technically still be above reach, and after uh, it'd be six seven years now, uh, six years now, he would have starved to death if nothing else, most likely. Unless he's chopping down on the corpses of Sangehi. That's a funny image. But yeah. So I, I don't think I don't think George would is gonna come back at all. I, I mean they already brought June back and that was enough of a stretch for me. I I think I would just quit if George was still alive. Not that I don't like George, just I just I just think it's that's jumping the shark to a new extreme. Um Cobalt Films asks I have a question since you know a lot about the Halo universe. Why did Dr. Halsey not react when she saw the Spartan 3s of Noble Team in Halo Reach when she, um, when we see she was not aware of the Spartan 3 program until November 3rd, 2552 in Ghost of Onyx? Well, this is a bit of a, this is a bit of an answer. I mean, you can, for one thing, when you, well, if you, when you watch that cutscene, you can see that Dr. Halsey very clearly treats the Spartan, you know, the Spartans, the Spartan 3s, vastly different than she does than she treats George out of your previous engagement George it's been too long mom what have you done with my armor just some additions I've made indeed upon seeing them she knows that they are she knows that they are augmented but she does not consider them Spartans because they are not from her program now, I do think the game did a bad, didn't do a great job of explaining this, but in her in Halsey's journal, there's an entry right after she meets up with Noble Team, and she's kind of going crazy, like, who the hell are these people? I can tell they're augmented because they're wearing Mjolnir and the way they move. The it, you know, she starts speculating that it's some ripoff of her program, and she starts listing all these different military programs she knows about that might have tried to copy her her research. But she does not identify them as Spartan Three specifically, and technically, she actually finds out about that in September of 2552. I don't remember the exact date. I want to say like the 11th or something. But she finds out about it when she's hacking into um, Colonel Ackerson's files, and she finds a file called S3, and instantly she knows, oh, that's going to be Spartan Three. So that's when she that's what prompts her to go to Onyx in the first place. But yeah, so she didn't really react because she had other concerns on her mind at that point. Notably, um, the artifact beneath uh, beneath Sword Base, and um, obviously the Elite Zealot team. So um, that's mainly why she doesn't react, and she does not know about the Spartan Three program. In, in fact, in Go in a uh, Glasslands, she makes a brief remark about how the team that she met on. Uh, on reach must have been Spartan threes. So you know, just kind of confirming that she did not know they were Spartan threes at that time. So yeah, I hope that answers your question adequately. And last one, uh, Noble Proto Nobel Protocol. I don't know if it's Noble or Nobel. I'm assuming Nobel based on the spelling. Um, asks, do you happen to write and do you enjoy writing? Obviously, I write the scripts for my, you know, the scripts for my, uh, my videos. I do enjoy writing it. Um, I have written a few stories, not really fanfic, just orig some original stories way back when. I used to love writing stories. Um, 
and I currently write, I'm, or I shouldn't say write, I am currently developing a tabletop RPG. I'm, mostly I work on the fiction aspect. A buddy of my, my, um, my friend and co-creator works more on the gameplay. We collaborate, obviously, between the two of us, but I work more on the fiction side for our universe. And, I mean, so, I mean, I enjoy that. That's that's about the extent of my writing, though, you know, between Halo Canon and uh, that, that stuff. Um, so, that is all the questions that I got. Again, I am. I apologize if I somehow missed your question, um, or if I did not adequately answer it in your opinion. Um, you know, feel free to blast me in the comments below if that's how you feel about some of my answers. Um, so, thank you for watching. Um, tomorrow is e is the E three media briefing. <laughs> Well, tomorrow when you're watching this, for me it's like two day. It's two days, but um, I can't wait. I'll be sitting down and watching it. You know, watching it live. Um, I'll be tweeting about it, and as soon as as soon as it's over, I'll start. I, you know, we're gonna get some Halo news there. Um, I'm gonna start. You know, I'm gonna try and produce a big old, a big ass video about everything. Just just everything. I'm my heart is fluttering right now because uh, with anticipation, I am so excited. So thank you guys for participating. Thank you for sitting through my video. Um, thank you for your support as always. I cannot be where I am without you. This has been Halo Cannon, and I'll see you next time. Why are you still here? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and maybe share it around on whatever social media you choose. Also, please be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. All your support is extremely welcome. Thank you all.